all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the channel today we have a raptors video for you guys if you enjoy it hit the like button hit that subscribe button for daily nba content i also will be live tomorrow at 9 30 a.m central standard time on my daily live nba show the links in the bio will also be pinned in the comment section hope to see you guys there um all right what's next for toronto this is a very 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 clear-cut answer on my end and uh it's basically what i was saying last season um and the last couple of weeks last couple of months whenever i talk raptors i say you just continue with what you got you know i, I really do i don't think siakam i don't think freddie are old enough where you want to fully build a squad around scotty barnes i, I think they have a perfect blend of, of talent they have multiple they have multiple skill sets but most of these players have one thing like most of them have one thing in common they are interchangeable they're versatile and they are long so yes yeah, scotty barnes is young siakam freddy they're not old by any means in fact they're entering their prime right now so i say you do nothing or maybe not nothing maybe, maybe nothing isn't it <laughs> nothing is not the answer i'm talking about the starters I'm, I'm talking about with the starters you do nothing with the bench um, I think you do need to re-sign Boucher and Thaddeus Young, or at least one or the other. Like, both of them present their own unique skill sets, but I'd say at, at the very least, you got to get one of those two guys. One of those two guys. I think the Raptors should start looking at guys kind of similar to Josh Hart. You know, players, honestly, like just Justice Winslow, like players who are very good on the defensive end and offensively they are they're not average because i think i think superstars kind of make average players seem like little weaklings like if you've got luca dropping what was he like 37 10 and 6 in the playoffs or whatever he was doing like 34 10 and 6 something like that like luca will make a player like let me think of somebody on the Raptors that I think you know most people wouldn't appreciate like um, honestly like Chris Boucher <laughs> Chris Boucher even like Malachi Flynn um, players like you know what Armani Brooks like Armani Brooks is not a bad basketball player any player in the NBA is in a bad basketball player maybe those aren't good examples but I do think the Raptors need to fill out certain things on their bench I'm looking at combo guards um, I'm definitely looking at just more depth in general you know i'll definitely be covering more players that the raptors could be looking at as far as offseason signings or even potential trades go but they're picking early in the second round uh gave up a first to get thaddeus young which if you have thaddeus young next season i still don't think it was a failure at all i, I even if thaddeus isn't a raptor next season there's no way there's no shot that trading a first round pick and getting detroit's pick in return so you're falling you know what eight spots back 10 eight to ten spots back i don't think that would be a failure at any point it was a success maybe it wasn't a massive success because you didn't get you know a player like eric gordon or karis lavert that statistically points per game wise is going to like whoa but raps fans know how important and critical thaddeus young was once he was acquired at the trade deadline and even into the playoffs and a little bit of a run a little bit of a comeback run that they made so you know, as far as the start, I don't want to talk about the bench the whole time because, like I said, I'll get players in cert in videos in all off season. Like if you've been following this channel, you, you know the deal. Like players like Dwight Powell. Like we'll make whole videos about you know should the rap sign Dwight Powell. As far as the starters go, I I genuinely don't think you change anything. Um, I really don't. You know, I've made some videos the past couple of weeks talking about you know possibly picking up DeAndre Ayton in a sign and trade or possibly. You know, trading away a guy like Freddie V for Dyson Daniels or putting yourself in a position in the draft to get a guy like Dyson Daniels. I'm huge on Dyson. And this gets me to like my over like my overarching point here. I trust Masai. I I I know he knows what he is doing. Like he is a G, bro. Masai is a G. And so I have full faith in him. And I know Raps fans have a ton of faith of him, as they should. So if Masai thinks trading a guy like Freddie for, you know, pick number 10 to try and get Dyson Daniels, the 6'8 point guard, shooting guard combo threat out of Australia, who's a beast on defense, has a super long wingspan, it's big as hell. Like, if he thinks that's the best route, I'm going to go with it. 
right? I'm, I'm definitely going to go with it. There was some people, I don't think Raps fans fall into this category, but there are a ton of people who are like, why did they just draft Scotty Barnes one year ago? Why, Scotty, who the hell is Scotty Barnes? Let me look up his stats. Scotty Barnes. <laughs> I hit inhalers. I'm not trying to. Asthma sucks. Um, <laughs> Scotty Barnes, 10 points in college. Boom, Masai, fire Masai. You know, team's going downhill. No Raps fans were really doing that because once Raps fans Googled Scotty Barnes, if they hadn't already had their eye on Scotty Barnes as a potential number four pick, you were like, um, yeah, he's a part, he, like, he's exactly the vision the Raptors are looking at. And so Scotty is going to be a beast. He already is a beast. So the production you're getting from Scotty Barnes as a rookie, rookie of the year. It doesn't. It's not like a situation like the the Rockets or the Pistons where you know, like from the Rockets standpoint, maybe you know, 26 year old Christian Wood doesn't have a long term future because he's soon gonna get paid, and the Houston Rockets are a couple of years away from contention, and you just you know they got young lottery picks coming like. It's just a completely different scenario because you got Freddie, who is you know Freddie and Siakam, who are both NBA final winners. Uh, these guys have been in the league. They've been with the Raptors for a very long time now. They know the system. You know they know Nick Nurse. Like they just feed off of Raptors fans' energy at Scotia Bank. Are they untouchable? I wouldn't use the word untouchable because, like I said, if Masai gets a deal he can't refuse, maybe, right? Maybe it happens. Maybe. But with Freddie and Siakam as your two leaders of the team, I do think that there is one thing that kind of needs to be demonstrated here. I, I do think that both of them, I think Freddie a little, what sucks is like, actually, you know what? Freddie got hurt at the end of the season. Siakam, yeah, he might've gotten clamped by Tobias, but he was getting doubled. He was getting tripled. Like the whole rap squad, you know, with Gary, with Freddie, it was a mess. The first couple of games of the playoffs were just a mess. It was Honestly, it was a maybe not a miracle, but it was just super impressive that the Raptors were able to end the series the way they ended the series. So, you know, are Siakam and Freddie untouchable? Probably not, but they're like the, they're like this next thing under untouchable. So, you got those two guys, and then you have a young gem of a stud in Gary Trent Jr. Who, I mean, defensively. Like, he led the league in steals for, like, half of the season. Uh, you know, defensively, he made a lot of improvements. He's a little bit of a streaky shooter, but that's what shooters are. Sometimes they can be a little bit streaky unless you're, like, one of the greats. Like, Steph Curry, Steph Curry goes through his streaks. He goes through his slumps. So as Gary Trent Jr. continues to get older, as he continues to develop and progress, which is kind of the purpose of this video, is just continue to develop, continue to progress these guys, get them into the system, get in the chemistry up with your boys, maybe bringing in some intriguing pieces to come off of the bench, guys like, you know, Dwight Powell, you know, Karis LeVert, I think the asking price would be too high, Eric Gordon, asking price too high, but, you know, players like that, maybe even a little bit more on the veteran side, maybe like one guy on the more veteran side, a guy like Eric Gordon, who could just kind of take over playmaking duties off of the bench, but moving on down the line, Lastly, we got OG Ananobi. Um, there's no shot in hell I want the Raptors to trade this dude. OG is one of the players in the starting lineup where if the Raps trade him, I think they would be making a huge mistake. I genuinely think this guy, you know, is he the next Kawhi Leonard? You know, probably not. You know, Kawhi Leonard's one of the best players. How can you not love OG? Like, how can you not love... I Sometimes I'll see these trades on, like... Instagram clearly not made by Raptors fans or Raptors viewers clearly and this is something we talked about all last season when I first started making Raptors videos was like does anybody outside of Canada or outside of a Raptors fan watch the Toronto Raptors because it doesn't seem like it you'll see some of these trades you'll be like what Siakam and Freddie for like some random ass like Miles Turner and Malcolm Brogdon and like a future first for Siakam and Freddie. Like, what am I reading right now? So 
I, I just genuinely think like oh gee you know he was one of like the first couple of games of the playoffs he was their best dude he was that guy he stepped up when he really needed to step up defensively don't even need to mention how good he is there three-point shooter 40 percent three-point shooter like he's coming into his own and what really sucked about og this past season was just he caught kind of caught the injury bug you know the whole raptor squad caught the injury bug and it it wasn't like the Raptors didn't really deal with like a long term, you know, like, oh shit, that injury sucks. Like a AC, torn ACL type of thing. It was more of like, damn, like OG just, you know, hurt his elbow, you know, Pascal just hurt his groin, or Freddie just hurt his groin. Like, it's just minuscule stuff, like, where they were just never really healthy at any point in the season. So definitely don't trade OG and OG. Don't trade any of the starting five players. Do not trade any of the starting five players. And I highly doubt that they do highly highly doubt even like a rudy even if you have the opportunity to get a guy like rudy gobert i have so much hope and faith in precious achua and how much he developed not only from last season to this season but just from the start of this year to the end of this year like holy shit dude this guy shot 40 percent post all-star break from downtown took two threes until he got to toronto in his entire career crazy so I wouldn't mess with much. I'd really just go for, if you're going to do a trade, make it super low-key. Um, if you're going to make a signing, make it as cheap as you possibly can to further you know, continue to pay these guys and kind of keep this starting five intact because, yes, at times are they going to need you know, kind of like a half-court playmaker. You know, if Freddie, Gary, if they're not able to create too much, yeah, like, you know, that, that's when you throw in a guy like, you know, Karis LeVert and Eric Gordon aren't my two options, but you kind of get what I'm saying. They're like a combo guard off of the bench who can just kind of come out there and score for you and provide that jolt off of the bench. So let me know what you guys think. Just kind of spitballing stuff here before we get into full-on Raptors offseason content. And uh, hit the like button, hit that sub button, and I will catch you guys later.